This is every Minecraft thing that defies all logic. Here's why this anvil will never fall, or this sign will never break, even if it's not supported by anything. So this is this simple little piston contraption, we're able to completely break Minecraft logic. Now, when the sticky piston retracts, it doesn't properly update the block that's on top of it, or the one that you attach to the piston's arm. And the reason for that is because the piston doesn't actually think it's supposed to work, since the obsidian's keeping the slime blocks from being able to move. And as such, the slime blocks aren't the only one that doesn't move, and we can get all of these illegal blocks that you see here, giving us one of the simplest ways to do update suppression, and one that still works in modern versions, might I add. We're not allowed to sleep in beds in the nether or the end. That's just intentional game design. But it's intentional game design that I don't think the villagers were made aware of, since if you get a villager into the nether through whatever torture means necessary, and eventually get it next to a bed, then sure enough, you can get them to sleep in either of the other dimensions without the bed ever exploding. But you try to kick that same villager out of bed, and it's gonna end one of two ways. And if you get your villager over to the other dimension and you notice they're not sleeping, keep in mind, they'll follow the overworld time schedule. I guess they're just jet lagged or portal lagged. I'm just glad it's not actual lag. <laughs> and while it makes sense to have floating sand and gravel when we're using an actual machine to suppress updates, when you see these out and about in the world, it makes a little less sense. And in fact, the whole reason that these things give off particles when you're underneath them was because when Mojang was made aware of the bug that made these blocks generate in midair, they decided it was just easier to make it a feature and call it a cave-in, <laughs> which I guess is fair. I don't like doing extra work either, but they didn't add in the particles when snow layers do this either. So those make even less sense. Now, Beacon's a tough block to get. Not only do you need to kill the wither, but you also need glass and obsidian, which are two blocks that you don't want to punch with your fist. But when you put them together into a beacon, then no matter if you're using a pickaxe or not, you're able to break that just the same, which always looked so weird to me. I would have thought that at least the obsidian would mean that we need a diamond pick. But no, we're able to break this any which way that we want. Though for me, the way that I want might still be with a pickaxe. It just looks safer. Minecraft has its fair share of hazardous blocks. You wouldn't want to stand on something made of magma. That much makes sense. But then why is the stone cutter safe? Now, if it was the old stone cutter texture, I would get it. There, the saw blade's completely enclosed. But here, it's completely out in the open for everyone to see. And while there do exist some data packs to make this dangerous, those just make it feel like you're hurting yourself for no reason. But especially with things like dripstone spikes getting added into the game, I still never understand why Mojang has this block this way. Building with slabs is a pain. Not only does it take an extra crafting step to make these, but when you accidentally stack up a double slab like this, then there's no way to actually break the two slabs individually. Now, you can place them individually, but there's no way to pick and choose which one of these that you want to break. And personally, that's why I like playing with mods like this, so I can pick and choose my battles. Or break the whole thing if I really want to. There's so many ways that Mojang can fix this, it doesn't make sense that it's still in the game. You can't place two block tall flowers in the new decorated pots. Or any flowers inside of them for that matter. And while it is possible to put one of the tiny flower pots on top of it and have it still look right, the truth of the matter is that even though these decorated pots are, well, pots, there's no way to put anything inside of them. Not water, not potions potions, not plants, nothing. Which is just confusing. Why would you add in these new two block tall plants that you get from the sniffer in the same update, but you give them no way to be planted inside of the new pots that came along with it? Nah, I don't know. Nobody likes it when you're ready for bed and then you're told that you can't sleep. And I'm not just talking about the message that you get when there's monsters nearby, but specifically this one, which is that the game's telling you the bed is too far away. Now, hold on, it's close enough to click on. I thought I was well within my rights to assume I could sleep here. But no, I guess this is a special case. And considering the fact that no other block in Minecraft shares this behavior, it feels like an unnecessary attempt at realism, and then at the same time, effectively breaking the game's own internal logic. What does this pattern look like to you? Well, under normal logic, it really doesn't look like much. You can't even say it's a glass half full. It's a pool mostly empty. But because of the weird way that Minecraft's water sources work, over time, this shape is all you need to completely fill up this basin. And that's never made sense to me. Infinite water in a small pool like this is one thing. I get that that doesn't make sense. But when you see that stretch to the limits here, yeah, then it's just getting confusing. Fireflies were supposed to be in Minecraft, but aren't. And the reason is that frogs would initially eat these fireflies. But when some fans told Mojang that fireflies are actually toxic to frogs in the real world, it completely removed the feature. Which isn't ideal, but what do frogs actually eat in the game? Slime, sure, but also magma cubes. And maybe it's just me, but the literal ball of magma seems a lot more dangerous than the fireflies. I mean, come on, it's not even real fire. And not to mention the simple solution of just having the frogs not eat the fireflies and still adding them. That was totally on the table, but no, magma cubes. Which I guess keeps to this fantasy theming that Minecraft has, but it might have kept to it a little bit too far. Cauldrons by themselves already do not make a lot of sense. Like, why are you able to put a full bucket of water in a cauldron, and then when you fall in it, you still break your legs at the bottom of it? But this waterlogged chest? Completely fine, even if it's one pixel of water. Or the fact that an enderman could stand in the water inside of a cauldron, and not mind it at all, even though the smallest raindrop will just make it freak out and teleport away. But perhaps the strangest one is that even though we're not able to place water inside of the nether, if we 
you place it inside of a piping hot iron cauldron, then it doesn't boil away. In fact, it's the only way to have water in the nether. And at that point, it just seems like the cauldrons can't decide whether they do or do not want to be actual water. In science, perpetual motion machines are just a hypothesis. But in Minecraft, it's as simple as eight rails placed together like so. Since by building a square of regular rails like this, if you place a minecart on top of the slope, it'll continue to go around and around the loop, never slowing down. And to make things funnier, you put an entity inside, and that just makes the whole thing speed up. And speaking of speeding up, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the king of fast travel in Minecraft, the ice boat. Now, ice and boats have never mixed too well in the real world. Ask the Titanic how that went. But in Minecraft, if you just place down a boat and some of the slippery stuff and start paddling, we can get some ridiculously fast speeds, especially when we're traveling in the nether. And then to make your ice boat highway make even less sense and make it cheaper, you can carve out holes in the ice like this so that you're only using every other block. And now I don't know what's harder to follow, Minecraft's logic or trying to follow this shot with a camera. At its highest level, Swift Sneak 3 is supposed to help you walk around while sneaking about as fast as you would when you're regularly walking. And on almost every block in the game, that's true, except for slime blocks. Since here, if we're walking, we might move at a pace at about 1.3 blocks per second. But when we then hold down the sneak key, we're moving at 2.2 blocks per second. Now, don't get me wrong, that's still not fast, but it seems odd to speed up the further you're sinking down into the sticky stuff. But as this user on Reddit says, there's really no reason to delete it. And even though I don't get it, I'm inclined to agree. Minecraft has its fair share of bad deals, but this one might have to take the cake. Since if you're using coal to smelt coal ore to get more coal, you're not only wasting smelting power, but you're also wasting a perfectly good coal ore. And really, you should have switched out the silk touch you used to mine this for a fortune pickaxe. That would have been a much better return on your smelting. Or if you're sick of this, just maybe go into your settings and turn off friendly fire. Credit to the person who already made that joke in the comments. It made me chuckle. This one makes it seem like Minecraft's having an identity crisis. At least its code is. Since while you are supposed to use a sword to break bamboo and cobwebs faster, it doesn't make much sense that doing that also uses up double the durability than it would if you just used a regular tool. And considering this has been unresolved in the bug tracker since back in July of 2020, I don't think we have any hope of getting this fixed anytime soon anyway. So at that point, the question's up to you. Would you rather waste your time or your sword's durability? I guess when you put it that way, it seems obvious. So zombies and zombie piglins like to break these turtle eggs. That's not the weird part. The weird part is that when they stomp on these eggs, the particles that it gives off are from the chicken egg texture, not the turtle egg, which is a bug for sure, but a bug that's also been unresolved. And since both the chicken and the egg came first, Mojin probably just thought they could use this texture and not have to worry about making a new one for the turtle egg. You know how I mentioned that it makes sense to take damage from magma blocks? Well, that's still true, but what doesn't make sense is that when you sneak down on the magma blocks, then you don't take any damage. And I've heard a reasoning that when you're holding sneak, you're supposed to be walking more carefully on the stones of the magma. That's all well and good, but what's even more confusing is that when you go underneath a slab like this, visually, it still looks like you're crouching down, but if you're not holding that sneak key, the game thinks you're not, and it'll just apply damage the same. Are you familiar with the law of the conservation of matter? I think I am, I dropped out of high school. But to my understanding, you can't create matter where there wasn't already matter already. So in that case, it scarcely makes sense that when you kill a snowman, which would take two snow blocks to make, costing eight snowballs, they can drop up to 15 snowballs on death, giving you three snow blocks. It just seems weird, though I guess we are able to constantly mine the snow layers that generated their feet for snowballs anyway, so it's logic that might be consistent to the snow golems, but not to regular logic of science. The way that it's coded, leather armor keeps you from freezing in powdered snow, but that's a broader statement than you might think, since really any amount of leather armor is enough to do the job. So by just having leather boots, you're no longer going to freeze on the entire rest of your body, even when fully submerged in the powdered snow. And at that point, it seems like a bit much. I get wearing these moccasins to be able to walk on top of the powdered snow, but to keep you completely safe from the snowy peaks, that might be pushing it. Especially when mobs that drop leather aren't safe by themselves inside of the powdered snow. And it just seems like Mojang picking favorites. Hiding the secret door behind a painting is old news in Minecraft, which might mean that you've never taken the time to realize just how weird it is that we're walking through a completely solid painting and coming out the other side. And not just paintings, signs, item frames, torches, all things that are completely solid in real life. In Minecraft, we can slide through them like we're made of liquid. Though that's funny, because even liquid gets stopped by something like a sign, making this all even weirder. Netherite is supposed to be the strongest thing in Minecraft. I mean, even if you drop the item in lava, it'll never burn. So why then is it not given the same resilience when it goes up against a cactus? Truly, any item that you throw at the cactus, regardless of what it is, will just break on sight. Which is made all the stranger by the fact that if you were to take that block, not throw it into the cactus, but place it next to it, then the cactus just completely falls apart. I guess it could dish it out, but it just can't take it. If you get in a boat and ride it off a cliff, you won't take any fall damage. That's not the weird part. The weird part is that if you take a boat and ride it off of specifically a 49 block tall fall, then you'll die of fall damage. 
and the boat breaks too. Now, that'd be okay if 49 blocks is the limit, but the fact that you're able to fall from over 50 blocks tall and still survive, then I don't get what's so special about block number 49. Or when you fall from a 114 block fall, then both you and the boat survive, but then when you get out, the boat will still break. And again, that's only block 114. Nah, who knows. Now, one of the cool features in Minecraft is that if you throw an instant health potion on a zombie, it actually hurts them instead of heals them, and vice versa for an instant damage potion. But following that train of logic, wouldn't it make sense if regeneration instead worked as poison on undead mobs? And for better or worse, this would somewhat make witches into healers when they throw out their poison potions. And it would definitely add some stress the next time you see a team synergy in the dark. Minecraft's textures aren't always pixel perfect. And while 1.17 took big strides to correct some of those, this block went unnoticed. As you can see, the light gray glazed terracotta is not only a mouthful to say, but also has a deceptively frustrating texture. If you try to line it up, you'll notice that the pattern doesn't connect, leaving many players frustrated and confused just how this slipped by. Especially when the patterns are the whole point of glazed terracotta in the first place. The addition of stripped logs into Minecraft brought a huge shift to building, because finally we had something that resembled the texture of logs while matching the color of the plank textures inside. Or at least, they mostly do. Since, if we were to line them up, it's clear to see that dark oak just doesn't fit up with the rest of the pattern. Which is a shame, since a darker shade for the dark oak texture would look quite nice. And while there might be points for changing this just for consistency, I will admit that current stripped dark oak does look quite nice as well. Every now and then, Mojang will add in an item, but then it just flies under the radar because it doesn't get used. And for my money, I gotta say that one of those is rabbit stew. Because after all, if you take all the different ingredients that it takes to make a rabbit stew and just eat them separately, it will fill up more hunger than the rabbit stew does altogether. So either Mojang needs to change it so that these stews have a bit more going for them, or they're just gonna stay at the bottom of the eating bin. Farmland has some weird restrictions that dirt doesn't. Mainly, it's not a full block, so we're not able to place decorations on the side. This is the reason why torches and ladders don't go on the side of a farmland, which is a weird limitation, especially for the torches, but I guess it's understandable. Though, while those don't work, for some reason, signs do? And honestly, putting a torch on the side of your farmland seems a lot less crazy to me. But if you really want it, just type torch on the side of the sign, and there, that's the closest you're gonna get. Chainmail armor has always been some illustrious item in Minecraft, because you can't craft it. But then, all of a sudden, Mojang goes ahead and adds actual chains into the game. But as far as I can see, even if you get your hand on a whole bunch of chain links, you're not gonna be able to stitch them together into a chest plate. And for that reason alone, Chainmail gets to stay as this white whale item that we only really get to use on PvP servers. And for those of us who mainly play in survival, I think that's kind of unfortunate. Look, as much as I love Andesite, Diorite, and Granite, they're only really useful for the building part of Minecraft. Because even though we classify these things as different stone variants, they're not actually able to be used for things like crafting stone tools. Or you know what's even worse than that? We can't craft stone tools out of actual clean stone. Look, Minecraft's got a lot of different stones, and I think that's great, and I would love a bit more variety in how I craft my early toolkit. Plains biomes make for great locations for building. Just there, you get lush grass, flat surfaces, and an overall nice atmosphere for your base. But there is one problem point you're sure to notice. Say you're placing the blocks as a foundation for your new house, laying them out in a row, only to have your flow interrupted by a measly flower. Since tulips, unlike the neighboring grass, have their own persistent hitbox, meaning we can't just place our blocks as we please. Which means most of the time we see these, they're just gonna be a roadblock to your building flow. Banner patterns can be pretty neat when you put them to use in the loom. But as anyone who's ever played around with that item knows, it can be pretty easy to lose track because for some weird reason, even though these are visual items, they don't actually have a visual indicator on the sprite, meaning you have to hover over and see that it's a creeper face. Folks, it only takes one look at the different banner fixed texture packs to see how cool this could be if we had a visual indicator. So for Mojang to do it, I think it's a no-brainer. Now, it's common sense that if you're on fire, water is the cure-all solution. I mean, even cauldrons uphold that fact. They aren't exactly for consistency. But if we all know that to be true, then I ask, how in the world does this work? As it happens, if you're on fire in a boat, you're able to submerge yourself in water and still burn the same. Stranger still is that you're still able to drown in that very water, even if it doesn't put you out. And folks, that's the definition of a lose-lose situation. Anvil should be one of the strongest blocks in the game. I mean, with a crafting recipe that almost requires a half stack of ingots, you definitely hope this investment could hold up. But apparently, even the smallest flower in the game can still break a block like this. As shown, you could
could drop an anvil on just about any decoration block in the game, and it'll break upon landing. And then, just as you start to understand that logic, it still manages to break this dead bush, making the whole thing even more ridiculous. The clouds are an odd remnant of Minecraft's code. I'd even wager that most of us have turned them off by this point, since they just tend to get in the way of things. But before you turn them off for good, maybe check this first. You see, if we position ourselves right above the cloud coverage during a storm, you'll notice how it even rains and snows above these clouds. So, if you got yourself an elytra and you want to see it rain above the cumulo nimbus, it is a cool view, albeit completely nonsensical. Dispensers in Minecraft are able to do a lot of the same capabilities that we can do with a right click. And while this means that they can literally place and refill water buckets at their own notice, if they're next to a cauldron, they're not actually able to fill them. Honestly, I don't know how this hasn't been added in. The way it is, it just seems like we're limiting this feature for really no one's benefit. It's not game breaking, it would just be kind of cool. And it could definitely add some fun machinery to your next potion farm. By having skeletons and zombies burn in the daylight, Mojang found an ingenious way to encourage players to explore during the day. But while that mechanic is a solid piece of game design, it does have a few odd quirks as well, such as how all of these blocks can't stop a skeleton from burning, but the cobweb does. Now, I get it, things like a chest are a transparent block, and they're coded as such. But a cobweb? That just doesn't make any sense. And if you ask me, if it lets light get through, then it should still apply to the sun rays as well. Over the course of Minecraft's history, it was made so that hay bales could actually dampen your fall damage. But that being said, hay isn't the only soft block we got in Minecraft which is why it's weird that other blocks such as sponge, snow, and wool don't dampen your fall damage. I mean, if you're giving me the option, I'd much rather fall on a block of snow or wool than anything to do with wheat. The sound effects for these blocks already sound so much softer than other options. I think it's just a natural evolution of the game. The cauldron might be the ugly duckling of the Minecraft world. And while we've talked about its many shortcomings before, this one recently caught my attention as well. Even though we can place a whole bucket's worth of water in this thing, it still doesn't allow for the Riptide enchantment on tridents, which would be fine if Riptide also didn't work on waterlogged blocks. But as you can plainly see, even standing on the virtual puddle that we have on top of a waterlogged chest, you're able to launch yourself just the same as standing in the ocean. Now folks, it's news to no one that lava is hot. Except of course, if it's just a few drips of lava. Because according to Minecraft, those are completely fine. Now I get it, these are particle effects that are really not meant to do much. But based on my limited time spent in school, lava hurts. And if you get it on you, it's gonna do some amount of damage. And while this might be more of a pain to add to Minecraft, than necessary, it would be a good wake-up call on your mind and to be careful where you tread if you got lava drips burning into your scalp. Minecraft is famous for some wild and wacky hitboxes. And if you don't believe me, then look no further than the minecart. In this scenario, the cart cannot go past along this rail while the block is placed like such, which seems a bit strict, but I guess it makes sense. That is, until you break that block and place one here instead, and then the whole argument's out the window. Just like platform nine and three quarters, this cart just magically phases through the wall. And that's stuff for a muggle like me to wrap my head around. Anyone who's ever got stuck in a cobweb knows that these things are an absolute pain to go through. And not just for us, but for most entities in the game. Except, of course, projectiles. Yeah, for some reason, arrows and such are able to go through these things without fail. But I guess if you look at the bright side, it does make cave spiders a lot easier to take out with a bow and arrow. And for that part, I'm thankful, even if the logic and reasoning isn't there. With the 1.16 update, Minecraft of course added in two new log equivalents, the Crimson and Warp Stem blocks. And sure, it makes sense that these wouldn't burn to a flint and steel or a furnace, but why can they be used as fuel in a campfire? As you can see, when crafting this item, it's possible to use the nether stems of the kindling, just like the regular logs, even though they don't burn in the regular gameplay. But if you're really looking to cook up a steak in the nether, I guess this is how you do it. So Minecraft has its fair share of prickly blocks. Now when you're starting out, this makes sense, but when I got a full case of netherite armor on my body, I don't get why I'm still getting hit by thorns. Granted, I don't think the barrier here should be just as simple as wearing armor. For example, if I'm wearing a leather helmet, I should still get poked on the rest of my body. But if I've got diamonds on my chest, legs, and boots, I don't know why I'm getting hit as much. And it would make traveling through these forest biomes a whole lot less of a pain. I know we don't like to talk about it, but if you actually crunch the numbers, Minecraft is ripping you off. If you look at it, it takes six planks to craft four stairs, even though a stair is three-fourths of a block. Where the extra parts go, I just don't know. I guess Steve is a bit of a wasteful person. And while again the stone cutter does dampen this blow, that's not an option for any wood items. And folks, there's nothing I like less than getting stolen out of my hard earned materials. Iron golems can be a decent bit of help if you need it, and at the very least, they'll work the graveyard shift at your local village. So just round up the iron, set it up like this, and the job will be done. Or maybe not. You see, if the pumpkin isn't placed last, then the golem will not spawn even when it's in proper formation. And in fairness, this is likely a holdover from the older versions where you couldn't even place a pumpkin unsupported. So, 
as such, the code never accounted for the possibility. Of course, TNT explosions can pack quite the punch. That is, until you put these underwater, and then that demolition dream fizzles out. But apparently, since Minecraft turns prime TNT into an entity instead of a block, we're able to put other things like sand into that same hitbox. And by doing that, the TNT will explode just the same, even if it's at the bottom of the ocean. It's absolutely a weird feature, but if you want to get rid of ocean ruins, this lack of logic might be your best solution. Now, if you've ever been outside in a winter wonderland, then you definitely know that snow is pretty good at falling from the sky. That is, unless you put it in a layer, in which case, I guess it's never gonna fall at all. Now, this is another case where Java Edition is actually different to the Bedrock counterpart. You see there, snow layers actually do fall when they're affected by gravity. And when you see how it works there, it makes sense. And it would look a whole lot nicer to just float in snow in the sky. Trust me. Even though Minecraft is a sandbox, that doesn't stop the game from having unspoken rules. And if you ask me, some of those are just bizarre. Take this ladder for example. Now if we make a path land underneath the wall and then place a ladder, you can see it works just fine. Though if we place the ladder above the grass and then try to make it into a path block, it's a no-go. And why that order exists, I've got no clue. But at least now we've got the proper arbitrary way to pull this off. Fishing in Minecraft has long been overpowered, so much so that Mojang decided to nerf the treasure loot tables back in 1.16 for most of the fish farms. However, even the nerfed version of fish farming is still pretty overpowered. You see, if you were to take a random water bucket from anywhere in the world, be it a jungle, the ocean, or even a rain-filled cauldron, and then you place that water source wherever you'd like, you can still fish infinite cod and salmon out of that one block. I'm not complaining, but it is a bit strange. The Frostwalker enchantment is quite a bit of power. And if you got Frostwalker 2 on hand, then you can tame some of the biggest oceans and put them in your control. And while that's all well and good, don't expect to show that same kind of dominion on a waterlogged slab. Because sure enough, even though these things have water in them, it's in the name, you're not able to Frostwalk them. Now from a game design point of view, I can see why this happens. But folks, I think it would be pretty cool to see some ice stairs. At the very least, it's worth playing around with. When it comes time to take on the dragon, me and my friends like to do it together as a bit of an event. So we go to the end dimension, take down the dragon, and then boom, whoever lands the last hit is the only person to get the achievement. There's other achievements in the game that don't require you to be the sole person to do it. But all of a sudden, when it comes down to killing the dragon, nope, it's just whoever got the last hit. And really, it would be better to see this group effort regarded as such, instead of an every player for themselves mentality. Steve's ability to crawl into small spaces is a definite game changer. But with that newfound ability, Mojang intended for a few different limits. Like, for example, how you're not able to move from a one block tall space to a 0.5 block tall space using a slap. After all, the player isn't exactly a contortionist. But if we place snow layers in a stack like such, we can just happen to get in a space as thin as the slab would allow. So if the caves aren't claustrophobic enough for you, this might do the trick. In Minecraft, fire safety is a pretty simple concept. If you got something hot, you don't want to put things that are flammable next to it. However, that's not always the case. See, with the magma block, even though the name might make you think that it is made of lava, or rather magma, it doesn't ignite any other blocks around it. In fairness, I guess it doesn't set you on fire when you stand on top of it, but that's weird too. Who knows, maybe the wood blocks around it are just holding shifts so they don't take damage anyway. So you go over to craft yourself a new set of iron tools, but in your hubris, you accidentally make a second pickaxe, so you put it in the furnace. Except regardless of the state that the pickaxe is in, you'll always get one nugget back in return. That seems pretty cheap. And instead, it might make sense that the amount of nuggets that you get from smelting an item is based off the item's quality because you can't tell me that all of that iron just smelts down into one single nugget. It's just not possible. The Ender Dragon is a destructive boss. Truly, unless the block is native to the end, the odds are that it's getting destroyed. And while it makes sense that the dragon could break down your cobblestone tower, why are Ender Chests on that list? After all, they're made of obsidian, so the logic would figure these are pretty safe. But as you can see when we put these next to the dragon, that's just not true. But hey, at least if she breaks this chest, your items are still well and good up in the cloud. Loyalty as a concept is a really cool enchantment for a trident, but I guess it turns out that the trident is only so loyal. Because as you can see, when you throw it in the end void, no, the thing's never coming back. You lost it. Now look, I get why I'm not able to come back from the end void, but a magically enchanted trident? I'd at least expect it to put up a fight. But as it stands, this just makes tridents a whole lot less worthwhile when you're going around the end islands. And for that point, I'd rather just leave it in my overworld. One of the best parts of the Caves and Cliffs update's first half is the addition of axolotls. I mean, they're certainly the cutest feature, that's no contest. But what these water wolves have in the ocean, they don't exactly match on land. And you'll see as much if you beach one. They move pretty slow. That is, until you tie one to a lead, and then it'll move surprisingly fast speeds. Why this happens, I've got no clue. But it is pretty hilarious, so I'm fine with it not making sense. As time has gone on, nether bricks have gotten more and more variations to play around with. 
which is good, it helps break up the monotony. But while that makes sense, I can't for the life of me find out why a cracked nether brick doesn't actually appear in a nether fortress. I mean, these places, much like strongholds, are pretty run down. Engaging by the fact that we have to smelt nether bricks to actually make these, clearly heat is the defining feature, and there's nowhere you're gonna find more heat than in the nether. Composters in and of themselves are kind of a ripoff. I mean, to put in all this plain material and just get one bone meal, it seems like a raw deal. But while that's a different discussion for another day, what's actually weirder is that you can't compost bamboo. Now folks, in real life, bamboo can absolutely be composted. It's a natural fiber. But here, no chance, it's just panda food. So if you wanna make your bamboo farm into something to get you bone meal, you're out of luck. Weight in Minecraft is a funny thing. Obviously, it takes some serious muscles for Steve and Alex to carry around stacks and stacks of raw materials, but what's even weirder is comparing the strength of Minecraft's other inhabitants. Take the drip leaf plant, for example. While it will bend in a few seconds to an item as light as a feather, a literal anvil can hold on top of it with no problem. And then, weirder still is that if we stand on top of that anvil, it doesn't bend. But just us by ourselves? Yeah, you get the picture. Anyone who's ever had to mess around with a bunch of different dyed blocks knows the pain of this one because as much as we'd want to, we're not able to actually re-dye different dyed blocks. But way too many times where I've gone over to a crafting table, wanted to take my old dyed blocks and turn them into something I could actually use. But no, I'm not able to do that. And as someone who likes to mess around with a bunch of color in my bases, I would definitely love to see this get changed around in a future update. When you're traveling, nothing breaks your stride quite like water. Sure, if you have a boat, you're just fine. But on your own, we tend to move a lot slower through the water source blocks. Then, if that's the case, why is it that when you waterlog a ladder, it becomes faster than a regular ladder. No joke, the game somehow combines the water swim speed with the climbing speed of the ladder and makes the operation all the quicker. And while the science would likely disagree, I'll take any excuse to get to sky limit faster. Every now and then, society likes to debate back and forth on certain topics. Whether that's the color of this dress, whether it says Yanny or Laurel, or of course, what came first, the chicken or the egg. And now I think that Minecraft might have one of its own. Given the two truths that gravel falls when it's unsupported, and a lantern cannot be placed without a roof of support, Port, then answer me this, does the gravel hold up the lantern or the lantern hold up the gravel? And really, I've got no clue either way. A long-standing tradition of Minecraft is you can actually craft nine of a different material into a bigger block. And for that reason, it's always a surprise to me that we can't do that with a nether wart block. Lord knows that I can take nine of these and actually craft them into a nether wart block, so why can't I undo the process? Way too many times putting a nether wart block in a crafting table and getting surprised as to why I don't get my nether wart back. And I've got a feeling I'm not not the only one who does that. While Minecraft clearly isn't going for realism with its graphics, there is one tidbit that cracks me up whenever I see it. And no, it's not just that Minecraft square and rectangular mobs cast round shadows, though yes, that's weird too. But as people have pointed out, these shadows can even be cast through solid rock slabs. And perhaps the cherry on top, it's possible to have those shadows appear on top of light sources like lava. And folks, while that is a laundry list of weird things, I guess they do give Minecraft its visual charm. After using all of your sponge to dry out the area for a guardian phone, Farm, now you know that you gotta dry out the things. And for that, you got a couple of different options. You can put them in a furnace or warm places like the nether. And while that all makes sense, I don't quite get why it's the case that if I put a fire right next to a sponge, it's not gonna dry out. Look, these things are hot enough to light me on fire, and you're telling me they can't do the same to Patrick's best friend? That just doesn't make sense. Everyone who's ever played on an SMP knows that one person who never wants to sleep. And the problem with that is, is that phantoms will spawn, and they won't just spawn to go after the person with insomnia, but rather everyone on the server at night is gonna get hit by these mobs. That is a real pain in the brain, and it definitely isn't fair. And it makes how annoying phantoms are to deal with 10 times worse. Which, to be honest, is the last thing the phantoms need in the game. Now, waterlogged stairs are a surprisingly helpful addition to Minecraft. Because, as you'd expect, the stair allows water to pour out one way, yet the next step will prevent water from leaking out the back. Though, if that's the case, then this cobblestone generator doesn't make much sense. Since flowing water is required to make cobblestone post-generation, then how does the cobblestone form at the back when it should be sealed by this step, but go figure, it still converts the lava just the same. Turtle eggs are perhaps the most fragile thing in Minecraft. Truly, just about anything can trample these, whether that's us, baby zombies, or even bees. Yeah, that's right, bees. Now, I get that these bees are pretty chubby by most standards, but I thought 
cut their wings would make them a little lighter on their feet. But apparently, according to Mojang, mixing your honey and skewt farms together isn't gonna happen anytime soon. Which, when you say that out loud, that part makes sense. Minecraft has been around for a while, so as that goes, many features have been added in and then just sort of forgotten. And chief among those has to be the furnace minecart trains. As you can see, they can't go around corners, they can't go up or down, or even change directions without disconnecting. Honestly, I'm amazed it's still in the game. While I doubt that Mojang will ever take a look back into the old piece of code this is lying in, until that happens, I guess we'll just have to keep up the hype train. Blast resistance is a funny thing. And for an example, let's compare an iron block and an iron chain. Now, clearly both are made of iron, but the block costs over seven times the iron ingots that we need to make a chain link, which might have you to believe that the block should be stronger than the chain. But as you can see, that just isn't so, with both having a blast resistance of six. So if you're looking for a solid iron wall around your base, maybe opt for the chain link fence instead. Now, one of the many different features for a dispenser is that it's able to place pumpkins. Granted, the intended use here is that it's supposed to make a snow goal them, but using a trick like this, we can just have it straight up place the pumpkin. Which is cool, but it begs the question, why can't it place other blocks? Something makes me feel like the dispenser's being held back by Mojang. So, for the time being, I guess I'll just have to live with pumpkins getting placed automatically. Oh, and shulker boxes, those work too. Instamining is one of the simple joys of Minecraft, which is why it can be frustrating when something breaks your stride. And while plenty of things can do that, nothing bugs me more than cobblestone. As it is, cobblestone takes longer to break than normal stone. And maybe it's just me, but it seems odd that a block that's clearly already broken and smashed up takes longer to break than a solid like regular stone. Unless Steve adds some concrete or paste to cobblestone after mining it, I think it just doesn't make sense. Gold tools might get the least amount of playtime in a Minecraft world. After all, without a gold farm, these things are pretty expensive to craft. And when you do, you barely get any durability anyway. But this might be its single biggest embarrassment. As you can see, every tool in Minecraft can break its respective material. Wood breaks wood, iron breaks iron, netherite breaks netherite, except for the gold one. And folks, you know it's bad when even the gold ore is unimpressed with gold's performance. When the 1.14 update rolled around, Mojang added in a chunk of different workstations. But now there were a few updates past that, it turns out that the fletching table is still the only table that doesn't have a purpose. I mean, you can use it to employ the villagers, so I guess they can use it, but we can't. I don't know why we don't make the new potion variants of arrows in this actual block. And that seems like a weird missed opportunity, at least until Mojang or the community can figure out what the heck this is supposed to do. Trapdoors and ladders go hand in hand, so much so that whenever you put a ladder in your basement, it's almost a guarantee that you have a trapdoor on the next floor to seal it off. Though, strangely enough, they might have more in common than you think. See, because we're able to climb a trapdoor like so when it's above a ladder, that means if you make a pattern like this, you're fully capable to climb up multiple trapdoors in a row. But obviously, you can't climb iron trapdoors by themselves, so the whole thing gets confusing. It's no secret that Steve can work up quite the appetite, but our empty hunger bar only tells a fraction of that story. Because give him the chance to eat a soup or a stew, and the player not only slurps it down, but physically takes chunks out of the wooden bowl. Which, I'll admit, would be funny if that was the last we saw of the bowl, but since we get it back, I think the chewing particles are a bit of an oversight, and maybe it's worth giving Steve a bit more manners in the future. Breeding animals in Minecraft is a fairly simple concept, and thankfully so. But the strangest bit about the parrots and the bats in the game might just be how fluid the mechanic is. As it's laid out, even if you have a wall separating the two mobs, you can still feed both of them and cause a baby to be born. And while I've got no interest in diving into the many questions that raises, I guess it just proved the old adage true, huh? True love truly knows no bounds. With another update in 1.16, we got something of a counterpart to cobblestone. Here, we could use blackstone as a substitute for crafting stone tools, furnace and even brewing stands. Which is nice, but it's not a complete replacement. For some reason, unlike cobblestone, blackstone can't be used to craft pistons or certain pieces of redstone equipment. Which, I get it, the nether isn't exactly the place to do redstone machinery, but I also don't get only doing half the assignment. So why not give blackstone the proper welcome to the crafting side? Fences are a staple in a Minecraft build, so we're all pretty familiar with their limitations. That said, it makes sense that not us, nor any other mob, can jump over the fence block. I mean, it would make a pretty lousy wall if it could. But while you can't can't jump over a fence or a wall by itself, if you add a carpet on top, making the whole thing taller, then you can clear the jump. Don't get me wrong, I like using these wall and carpet combos in my builds, but do I understand them? Not so much. Minecraft bricks have been around for a long time, and with that story history, dating back to the early versions of Java Edition Classic, the texture has changed a bunch. And while it's clear to see that it's done a lot of growing up, the texture still has one issue to see. That is, if you look at the bottom of the block, you'll notice that some of the bricks don't line up. Rather, since the texture is repeated, there's not a logical consistency with the brick placement, which is a small complaint for sure, but mildly infuriating nonetheless. And with that folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video, so see if they're right and have a good one, all right?